Ansel Adams once said that there's nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept. I'm of the opinion that there's also nothing worse than a fuzzy image of a sharp concept. In today's landscape photography, sometimes we just can't get good front to back sharpness in our images in one frame. And that's where focus blending for landscape photography comes in. Today's episode is all about my focus blending technique that I use both in the field and in post-production, and I hope that it will help simplify what seems to be an overly complicated concept amongst other photographers. So let's head on into the studio and get started. Welcome back everyone. Back in the studio today to talk about focus stacking or focus blending for landscape photographers. But first, if you're new to the channel, I'm Travis Rhodes. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time I upload a new video. I'm going to be trying to do a video every week that will cover anything from my trips that I take to post-processing to the presentations I've been giving. I've been turning them into YouTube videos. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, after the video, if you like what you saw, hit the like button, leave me a comment. If you have questions, please put those in the comments. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Um, and if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see uh, as future content on the channel, let me know there too, and I will be glad to dig into it. So let's just jump right on into this episode on focus blending for landscape photography. All right, so we're here in Lightroom now, and we're going to start talking about focus blending for landscape photography. As you can see on the screen, I have an image here from my trip to Mount Rainier uh, in August of 2019, trying to catch a little bit of the wildflowers that were still in bloom up on the slopes. In an image like this where the flowers here in the foreground are just a few feet in front of me, and the mountain off in the distance is, well, it's a lot more than a few feet in front of me, this image would be very hard to get it all in focus in one shot. Uh, this first image here is the image that I made for the mountain area. If we zoom in to one to one, we can see good sharp detail here in the trees. But if we pan down over here into the flowers, we can see that the flowers are starting to lose some of their sharpness. And that's even with an 18 millimeter lens at f8. I still don't have very good sharpness here in this corner. But if I use the image that is for the flowers in the corner, you can see they are much sharper. I can see all of those little textures and even some of the little water droplets that are still on the flowers from the morning. But if I zoom back out and then zoom in on the trees in the distance, you can see I've lost some of that sharpness. It's just not there. And while if you're only putting this on Instagram or Facebook or social media, you're probably never going to see the difference from focus blending. But if you're like me and you have a tendency to print your images and sometimes print them for pretty big, that lack of sharpness, particularly in the foreground areas, is really going to show up. For this image, these flowers are what my focus was. They are what I was there to take the picture for. They are what I really need to be sharp. But I also want the mountain to be sharp in the distance. So what I did was I got set up and got my image for the mountain uh, in on the cards early because what I was doing was waiting for the sunlight to get over the hill behind me to light up the flowers that are here in the foreground. So now that I have that image in the cards I can sit and wait and as the light started coming in I made another image for the trees that were right in this zone here. Uh, this first image was focused on the trees up in this area. The second image was focused on the trees here in this zone and across through here. And then I could wait until the sun got up high enough that it 
lit up these flowers and I could use this little red flower here as my focus point and make my image for the flowers. Now this one is a pretty easy one. I could easily remember once I got back home where my focus points were. One up here, one down in here, and then that red flower. Uh, sometimes it's not quite so easy and sometimes it might be several months before I get to edit the images. Um, and so having shot a few focus stack images and got back to the uh, the house and getting ready to edit them you know many months later I found that I couldn't remember where I focused on. And so the next time I went out uh, to Death Valley in the January of 2019 I decided that the way I was going to remember where I was focusing for all of my different frames was to simply point at it. To stick my hand out there, point at the spot I was focusing on, and then take the next frame. Pointing again at the spot I was focusing on. And the way I do that is because I'm using a tripod and a timer is I will acquire focus for the main image, shoot that series of brackets if I'm doing brackets, and then I will acquire focus again on a two second timer and as the two second timer starts I'll stick my finger out there to point it right at the spot that I'm focusing on. And this gives me you know a reference point for what I focused on to create that image. So that if I'm editing the image months later, um, or as lately, m maybe a year or two later, I can remember where I focused on. And it also gives me a good marking of how many images were in the frame. I will also typically, in the field, shoot a dark frame with my hand over the lens, uh, both at the beginning and then again at the end of a series. Uh, especially if I'm shooting multiple uh, versions of the same shot. But for this particular image here at Mount Rainier, I was only shooting one series of images because I wasn't going to have a lot of time. Uh, the sun was starting to come up and as soon as it got up over here, I got that series of brackets in and then that light was gone and all of this was in the light and the sun and it was just too bright and it had lost that special feeling uh, that this particular image had, at least for me. So that is some of the in-the-field workflow that I go through when I know that I'm going to be shooting a focus stacked image. I will carefully arrange my shot and then I will expose for my frame that I'm going to use and also for pointing to the point parts of the image that I'm uh, going to be using for each portion of the frame. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how those line up and stack in Photoshop and how I do that part as the, in the post-production portion of it. We will start with this image of Mount Rainier. What I tried to do is get my edits to match on all three of the images that I'm going to be using. You can see over here on the side I've done the edits for one and then I've done edits on this one that kind of bring out these colors and textures just a little bit more on this piece but not up here in the rest of this image because quite frankly for this frame I don't care what's going on up here I'm not using any of that information I'm only using this frame for this portion down here so once I've got my edits for the three frames synced up I will select all three of them and then edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And now that I've, Photoshop has loaded all three of my images in as layers to be edited, I will arrange them in such a way that the background image, that is the file that is going to be all of the mountain and everything in the background, is at the bottom. And then I will put in my foreground image, I'll put that in the middle. And then I'll put the stuff that is the foreground image and bring that to the front so that they align foreground, midground, background. The next step is to make sure that they are all aligned. I select all of the images 
and go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. This is an important step just in case something moved or the camera shifted just a little bit. But it's also important because sometimes you get what is called focus breathing where because of the lens elements are moving when you're focusing it will have just a little bit of almost a micro zoom effect where things move just a tiny bit front to back this image it doesn't really suffer from that too much the Zeiss Battis 18 millimeter doesn't really have too much of a problem with focus breathing uh, the Sony 16 to 35 GM, on the other hand, it has quite a bit of focus breathing, particularly if you have very close foreground subjects and then very far background subjects. But we've aligned the images, and we can see that they all align pretty well. Not a real big problem. So now we have those images all lined up, and we can start on the blending. I turn off the foreground layer and have the background layer and the midground layer turned on and then I will create a layer mask on top of the midground layer I have that set to a quick key of F2 because I do this a lot but it's basically create a layer mask and then fill it in with black and then come to your brush and I always just go to a st opacity of hundred percent and start painting in that midground area that I wanted from that frame. As you can see it starts to paint over that midground area and remember I'm only focusing on this stuff here in the midground. These trees here on the left, these trees right here, the ones in the bottom of the gully and then moving up the ridge. I don't want to mess with these trees up here because those were on my main layer. So I bring these trees in and then I can see that this is the stuff I'm using from this layer. Turning all the other layers off, I can see exactly what I'm using from this shot. I always kind of check it every now and then to make sure I'm still covering the parts of it that I want to cover. The next one I'll go and I'll grab the foreground layer and again apply a layer mask again on white with 100% opacity and start painting that in also. And this one I'm bringing in a whole bunch more of it. Painting in all of this area here. Now it's gotten a little too bright so I'm going to go back to the black and maybe at 50% opacity come back in and paint in the edge a little bit I may have grabbed a little too much of this one just painting back some of what I'm not using I'll keep that little spot there because what I was trying to accomplish was blend in these bright flowers into the frame where I was waiting on the light to happen and just gradually coming back and working the color in just a little bit at a time in small increments. If you watched my post-processing video you'll remember that a lot of what I do is in very small increments. It is not one button or one thing that fixes an image or makes an image better. It's lots of little adjustments and I'll just go ahead and fine-tune that to however my taste is for this particular image. I can see here that I need to fix this area up here on this sky just a little bit. I've got a little bit of a harsh line on there so I'm going to paint some of that back at a lower opacity just to blend it in a little better so I don't get an ugly harsh shadow or halo really uh, in any particular area. So that's a pretty easy landscape picture that is a focus blend. And now if we come in and do control alt shift E or command option shift E, it creates a new layer out of all three of those that is basically the blended version of all three of them. 
and I can come in and see that I've got really nice sharp details in the flowers but I've also got really nice sharp details in the trees and the rock faces in the distance and then I can go about doing the rest of my editing on that image and that's a pretty easy you know doesn't have to be super technical I'm not going in and cutting in around all the little pieces of the tree um, because it's it's all general and this way when it's printed all of this here in the foreground will be nice and sharp all of that in the background will be nice and sharp and it'll present really nicely in a print so let's go on and work on one that is a little different a little more close up with a little more exact needs than this one had all right now we're back in Lightroom and we're gonna look at this image from my February 2020 trip to Death Valley this one is uh, an image where the foreground textures are just as close to the front element of that lens as I can get it uh, I've got the camera laying right down on this these mud tiles and I'm trying to get it just as close as I can and get all of this still in focus and if I zoom in on the image for the foreground you can see I can I can start picking mud off of there very sharp all the details I want good sharpness but if I zoom in on the mountains in the distance you can see that those are not sharp anymore those are definitely out of focus and this was shot at f9 at 16 millimeters those mountains just are not sharp those mountains will not print well they will print out of focus and it just won't look good if I come to the image at the end that was the image that was for the mountains as it loads you can see that it is going to have a whole lot more texture and it is much sharper and has all of those details both in the the bushes in the mountains in the background in the clouds all of that texture is there again where it wasn't possible on the image for the foreground see so again not sharp and then the other one is very sharp this is the one where I had used my trick about pointing to the spot I'm focusing on so on this one I've got three spots I've focused on one is here in the foreground for all of this stuff here one is here more in the midground for this midground area and then the the image at the back that is for everything that's in the background so again I've done all of my edits on the same frame uh, the same exposure for each of those uh, focus points I'm going to take all of those and right click on them and edit them in Photoshop as layers again alright now I have all three of these images loaded into Photoshop and again I will put my foreground image at the at the very top and my middle ground image and then my background image in this case uh, I'm going by numbers um, because I know that I shot the background stuff later so I can zoom in and see that in fact that is my foreground image if I turn it off it starts to get sharper and turn that one off it starts to get sharper but what you see here is also what I was talking about earlier and that is focus creep this particular lens is known for focus creep when even though the, the the focal distance didn't change it tends to suffer from focus creep so again selecting all three images edit auto align layers and let that run and do its thing making sure all of these images kinda line up as best as possible so they've all lined up now and you can see that I'm losing that much space on my front image on my image that is focused on the foreground it has that much more space in it than it did on the other ones and that's the focus creep so I'm gonna turn that one off and turn this one off and this is now my distance image so I'm going to turn on my midground image and again I'm going to create my layer mask and then with my brush set to 100% now 
because I'm working basically backwards, I can paint everything below the background in with my brush. Because I'm work I'm trying to keep all of this up here in my background image and keep everything down here that will end up being my foreground image. So I can paint all of that out. Again, turn off the layers and double check the work. It's kind of like math growing up in school. Show your work. I use the toggling on and off to show my work. You can see nicely blended in. Doesn't have to take, don't have to go in by pixel by pixel level. And you can see, I can zoom in here and you can't see where that was. I can turn this one off and you can start to see that it blends in. Part of that is using a brush that is set to uh, not full hardness, but a full soft brush. Then bring the foreground layer in, again making a layer mask. And now I am really only going to be paying attention to the part that's right in here. I can turn these off and I'm just going to bring in the stuff that's right here, right up in your face. I mean this stuff was right in front of the camera lens. Come in and kind of check the lines, check the layers. Because Photoshop did a really good job of auto aligning it, everything lines up really nice and clean. I don't have to worry about too much overlap or, or funny lines where you come in here and you get a funny line because that one didn't line up good or didn't brush in right. And again, now I've done that just very lightly, very quickly, very easily. Didn't take a lot of time. I can again create my blended layer of all three of them. And because this one had the problem of focus creep, I need to crop it down before I go on about doing any more of my other edits. So I'm going to set up some guides as minimums. I'm going to maintain my original ratio. But I don't want to go above that. I don't want to go below that. And I want to keep this point pretty much right here in the middle. So now my image is cropped, it's focus blended, and now I can start doing the rest of my edits. I always try to do this first. If I'm doing a focus blended image, I try to do all of the blending first. Get it to this point, and then sometimes I'll actually save a copy of it as this, and then go about doing the rest of my images and save that one as a new file also. That way if I ever decide I need to go back to the basic right after it was blended image, I can do that. I do use a non-destructive editing where most everything is done on a layer and I can get back to it pretty easily. But sometimes I want to just start all the way over right at the base of my blended image and not be encumbered by the edit decisions I had made previously. So I do sometimes save uh, just this blended version uh, as its own file and then start doing all my edits and save a new copy. So that's pretty much the way I focus blend my images and now I have an image that has great sharpness up front, great sharpness in the middle, and really good sharpness in the background. All from one spot, three images, um, and I don't have to shoot it at f16 where I would start getting diffraction down here in the corners. You can see my corners are still sharp. They're not all fuzzy that you sometimes get when you start shooting above f16. But I've got a nice image that's got good sharpness front to back that will print really well. Well, that wraps up this episode on focus blending for landscape photography. I hope that some of the tricks that I showed you both for in the field and in post-production help to simplify what is often thought of as a fairly complicated concept. I hope you'll tune in next week for another video here on the channel. Thanks for tuning in this week. I appreciate it. See you next time. Bye.